Hey there, I'm Brianna from Bambi Media here to give you a little quick rundown on how to EQ your voice in Descript. So I have this project here that I'm putting together at the moment in Descript to show you as a DIYer how you can do this yourself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to some of the voice and decide based on how it's coming into my headphones what the issues are with this particular voice. So if we have a look at our Descript window and I'll bring that up for you. This is Descript. This is how it's looking right now. I will start listening and you will be able to listen and hear it too. Today we're going to go through the difference between host red and programmatic advertising. If you've clicked on this video or you've clicked on this ep Okay, so what I'm hearing is there's a little bit too much in the oh, in the bassy kind of end. And then there's a little bit of stuff going on in the top end that I'd like to do a little bit of uh, working on as well. So the first thing you do is you click on the audio itself and then you go into effect, sorry, audio effects and click on the plus, go to EQ and do this top one here. I don't like to use their defaults because I feel like I can do it better. <laughs> you may want to do it using the defaults that they have, like the presets, but I have a degree in audio production. I have spent many years doing this. I have been doing this for eight years as a job in the business, as a producer. And yeah, prior to that, I was a, a songwriter, composer, working in this industry for like 15 years. So to me, using the presets, they have to be pretty bloody good for me to do it. And when I w looked through these and I listened to them, it wasn't quite right. And so I want to adjust it for my voice the way I think my voice should be handled based on the microphone that I'm using at this time. Now what I'm going to do, now that I've got this up and it's putting in default, which sets it as nothing, you can turn some of these off if you feel like you're not going to need all of them. I generally don't use number one. I'm not going to do a low pass, like filter off. I just work off of this sort of area here, two, three, four, and sometimes five. And I'm going to listen. And then what you're going to see me do is actually move. And this is something that we learned in our degree, uh, is that one of the best ways to figure it out is to listen to those areas where you think it might sound bad and you'll start to hear when something's really grating on your ear. When it's really grating, you know you want to pull it out. But you never really want to pull it out as a big chunk like this. What we like to do is say we like to use notches. So to use a notch, apply a notch, we want our width to go to about 15. And that will be a notch. So it's it's pulling out a small amount of frequencies, not a large amount of frequencies. Because oftentimes you're only needing a few of those frequencies to actually be pulled out. Most of them are fine. There's just a few little niggly ones that need some help. So I'm estimating that it's going to be somewhere around here that I'm feeling that it's a bit heavy. And now you're just going to watch me do it. Bambi Media. Yeah. Today we're going to go through the difference between host red and programmatic advertising. If you there. clicked on this video or you clicked on this episode in your podcast platform then Pull it out. you're already interested in knowing the difference for that you already and then there's are some up here. in advertising on your podcast so we're going to go through these differences for this and not worry too much about like why you would want to have an ad in your show because you're already kind of exploring that yourself uh, so first thing I want to go through is the stats few of the stats that have come through from the audio advertising state of the nation report for 2023 thanks to IAB this is the Australian edition and we're going to have a quick look at a few things that are kind of going to help you understand and realize how important or how much advertisers want to be involved in podcasting at this state of the game so in this particular stat that we have here in front of us and if you are listening to this I'll explain it as best I can 78% of media agencies intend to increase investment in podcast advertising in 2023. That's a very big number. So you can see that 22% of them want to increase it slightly. 59, you can see that 22% of them want to increase it significantly. 59% want to increase it slightly. 15% okay. want to remain the same. And then you've got 2%. All right, so that's what I've done there. Now, 
A lot of the time in EQing, it's it's the case where if you take something out, you should put something back in, right? Uh, so as in, if you take some frequencies out, you got to put some back in somewhere else to kind of balance it out. But in this case, for this microphone, for this sound that I'm hearing right now, there's not a lot of frequencies that I feel like we need to put back in. It's just some pulling that I need to pull out. And so if we listen back to this and I switch it on and off, hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference between uh, what I've done and then what it came in as. Keeping in mind, there's also effects running through. I have this running through a Avalon preamp, like it's a beautiful valve sort of preamp thing. And there are some EQs and things that have been applied in that stage as well. So there shouldn't be too much that I need to do because most of it gets handled down there. But there are still some little effects and things that I want to sort of fix up. Okay, so let's listen to it now. 15% want to remain the same and then you've got 2% decreasing and 2% that are investing for the first time. So this is fantastic news for you as a podcaster because you can go, well, clearly brands want to. Okay, so that to me has made it feel crisper. It's pulled out some of that huh, low, huh. there's like a huh sound that I really don't like on that low end. And it's, it may uh, have it sounding a little bit thinner, perhaps, but I prefer a thin sort of sound than too much body in the bass because it then starts to, like if you've got headphones or if you're listening on speakers and you've got too much bass, then things start to sound muffled. So I want things to be crisp more than I want them to be bassy and heavy, even though bassy is, is fun. When I'm working with vocals, I want to make sure that I've got a crispness over something that has too much bass in it because I don't want it to turn into muffled. So that's the EQ that I apply. And I, what I would like to say to you on that is don't be af afraid to play with this as an EQ and you're not going to get it right the first time you do it. It's actually something that you, you hone in on that you get good at over time the more you do it. Don't be afraid to go into what this is called the parametric EQ and look at where those spikes are and listen and, and just zone in on it. Put some headphones on. That's going to be the best way to do it and get a real feel for it. The other thing I will say on this, though, is that what you're hearing in your headphones also depends on the kind of headphones that you're using when you are editing and EQing as well. So if your headphones are bass headphones, if they have a frequency response like uh, that they prefer bass, that they want to give you bass, if, they're, if these headphones are meant for listening to music, then you're going to be, it's going to give you more bass in your headphones than potentially there actually is. So definitely try and get a pair of headphones that are monitoring headphones. And I'll put a link to some monitoring headphones in here. They're generally not cheap, but they have a really flat frequency response in, the, in there. These particular headphones are not my normal monitoring headphones. <laughs> uh, so these are actually a pretty cheap pair of AKGs. Um, and I have to be aware of that and account for that when I'm putting things together. And what I'll do is is I'll put the headphones on and I'll EQ, then I'll take the headphones off, I'll listen to it on my studio monitors, my speakers, see what that sounds like, knowing that there is a little bit of bass, there is a little bit of reverb in the room, so that will again adjust like what you hear. Then I will listen, if I'm really trying to get something really perfect and right, I will put a little pair of in-ear headphones in, like the Apple AirPod, uh, Apple iPod things, I'll put them in, listen to what it sounds like in them, uh, I'll go to the car, listen to what it sounds like in the car and try a few different speakers because no one's going to have, well, a lot of people aren't going to have the same setup as you. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get an EQ that works well for most situations. And sometimes it's actually better to monitor to EQ with crappier headphones <laughs> so that you know that it's going to sound good on the worst possible situation. <laughs> uh, and especially for voice, that can often be the case that you're listening to them not on something really fancy. You don't have your fancy music headphones on. You've just got some other pair of things in and maybe they're little wireless, you know, Bluetooth kind of headphone things as well, some of which are very good, but some of which aren't so good. 
So take that into account, trial and error, and you will often find that this kind of level around the 260, like if I bring up this page again here for you, uh, this sort of zone around between the 200 and 300 can often be like a quite a basey area where you, you will need to pull something out. And then often, again, around this kind of 3 to 5K, there'll be some sort of weird grating feeling in there as well. Uh, and then sometimes to add presence, to give presence back to a recording to make it sound a bit crisper, you sometimes actually put in a bit of a frequency up here around that four to five-ish zone to give it that that uh, little bit of extra spread. If you go here and like if we if we put this away here and we get another EQ going, and if we put this one as one of the standard presets and it says press it presence, see how it's doing that for you. It's giving that, but it's giving you not a notch. It's giving you quite a large sort of zone there and so you might want to play with the width of that to make it feel a bit better and then again if you're wanting depth and body it'll do things like that but it's just one frequency and generally you need to adjust more than one to get it sitting where you actually need it to set so there we go that is my quick little tutorial on how to eq your vocal the way you eq your vocal will be different to the way i eq my vocal because we have different voices and once you get used to your voice you'll start to understand what's going to work best for your voice and your microphone if you've liked this video please hit the subscribe button and get used to getting this kind of content from me we're doing a series at the moment on diy recording and editing using Descript because I have found that to be the easiest for the person that knows nothing about this sort of stuff. So you'll see a lot of tutorials coming from me regarding that and uh, I look forward to giving you more information. Thank you.